Last night on this show, we showed you a customs document that indicated that Mandalay Bay security guard Jesus Campos made a previously unknown visit to Mexico, that's 700 miles round trip from Vegas, and he did it within just days of Stephen Paddock's mass shooting, even though Campos was a major witness, maybe the major witness to the massacre, and apparently was shot in the leg during it. We raised a bunch of questions about the shooting, like whether Campos was actually a licensed security guard, whether he'd ever interacted with Stephen Paddock in the past. In a shooting with so many mysteries, these seem like reasonable questions, but so far police have stonewalled us, hung up on us, actually, when we asked them. Fortunately, the head of Compass's union is more forthcoming. David Hickey is the president of the Security Police and Fire Professionals of America, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Hickey, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. So um, our sense is that Jesus Compos's story is of great interest to his employer, MGM, and they're doing whatever they can to shape it. Is that your sense? I think Mr. Campos's story is of great interest to everyone. Yes, we uh, agree. Based on the tragedy, yeah. So um, let me ask you a couple questions, just factual ones, because we don't know them. What was, what was his job at the hotel? Jesus is a, is a security officer, or was a security officer at Mandalay Resorts. Um, is he licensed by the state? How does that work? No. Security officers that work directly for a company yes. in house security, they do not have to be licensed. They don't have to have uh, guard cards, security cards. If they work for a contract agency, then yes, they do. Okay. We tried to get the answer from the Clark County Sheriff yesterday, and he wouldn't uh, reveal that. Did, you were aware uh, that Mr. Campos went to Mexico shortly after the shooting, correct? Yes, I was. Um, and what was the purpose of, of that trip? Do you know? He told me directly that was a pre-planned trip. Yep. Uh, he had planned to go visit family, and uh, after the uh, shooting, he was still capable of doing that. So he went ahead and made that trip on the weekend. I spoke with the local officers. I was actually going to fly in on that weekend, and because uh, Mr. Campos was going to be visiting family and returning on Monday, then I flew in on that Monday uh, to meet with Mr. Campos. Huh. Um it, it, no one would begrudge the man a vacation, of course, but because he was a key witness in this investigation that was still ongoing and chaotic at that point, did investigators have qualms about him leaving? Not to my knowledge. There were, there, there were no qualms about him leaving because he, his plans had been made prior and he intended to return on Monday, which he did. Um, it, by car, the whole up and back? Up and back, yes. Can you describe the nature of his injuries? Mr. Campos was uh, wounded in the left thigh. Uh, two uh, fragments of a shell uh, hit him in the left thigh. And uh, when I met him for the first time on that Monday, uh, he was uh, recuperating. He was in good spirits and, uh, and uh, looking to tell his story and, and move on with his life. Had those fragments been removed when he took the trip to Mexico? You know, I was told one of them had been removed and one of them had not, and that they were going to deal with that issue at a later date. Had Mr. Campos ever seen Stephen Paddock before the shooting? Not to my knowledge. Does he still work for MGM? He still works for MGM, yes. Did they set up the Allen interview, his employer? I don't know who set up the Allen interview. We had. Uh, five interviews set up uh, yes. prior to that. I know that when I was in town, uh, Ellen's uh, um, interviewer, the, the person that schedules the interviews, called Mr. Campos on his cell phone. Uh, he handed me the phone. I took the phone, uh, responded to her that she could call to arrange an interview if she wanted, and uh, then we didn't hear from her. And of course, uh, after that, Mr. Campos. Um, was taken to a clinic on Thursday. But why did he skip the interviews? I, I can't speak for Mr. Campos on that. I've had no contact with him since that time. And, uh, huh. you know, I, I think, it, you know, it's Mr. Campos' story, and I think he has a right to tell it on his own. Uh, but, uh, you know, as far as we were concerned, we were prepared to do the interviews. We were hours away, five hours away from actually uh, doing the first and, interview. And then he disappeared with that explanation. Do you know where he went? 
We received a text saying that uh, we are taking him to the quick care. And who's we? Who is taking him? There was, when, when we left the room, we, we were having a meeting with uh, um, three upper level MGM management people. Ah. And uh, when we left the room that we were in, um, or left the living room, it was Mr. Campos, one other security officer, a fellow officer, a fellow yeah. member of the union, and uh, then there was a, uh, a corporate security officer. Yeah, of course there was. MGM's was in charge, clearly. Thank you very much for all of that. Really interesting. All right. Thank you.